Hello, LinkedIn. My name is Liam Redding, HubSpot strategist with Remotish Agency. And today I'm going to be explaining a little bit more about business units, something that I've become very familiar with over the last several months. It's a new feature to HubSpot, so it's something a lot of us are still discovering and learning about uh, the different things that are impacted by business units and how they can be leveraged uh, for success inside the HubSpot portal. So I wanted to kind of dive into some of those features, some of those use cases and how that actually turns from like a strategic vision into tactical uh, you know, execution inside of the actual portal itself. And just some of the, the key important things to know about business units. So I just wanted to pass this information forward. Hopefully everybody finds it useful. I'm gonna try to keep it uh, short and sweet. So aiming for under 10 minutes, but we'll get going. So what is a business unit? A business unit basically allows you to segment between multiple brands within one single HubSpot instance. So you can, as this line puts it, confidently manage contacts, assets, and settings across those multiple brands. So HubSpot has this landing page backslash business units, which breaks down a lot of really good information uh, to know about the business units. But my favorite part of this page is the breakdown, this table at the bottom where it basically allows you to take a look at this and see whether or not you should have a HubSpot with business units, a HubSpot with multiple domains, or multiple accounts and portals. The reason why that's important is you basically need to ask yourself these questions and the chart or this table of data will, will tell you which of those three options is the best for you. So do you need one with uh, one HubSpot with business units or multiple accounts and portals and basically each of those sub brands would then get their own portal so this is just a really good starting point to come to if you're thinking about business units and whether or not you need them for your multiple brands you can read through some of these questions and it'll give you a really good idea as to whether or not you need business units another thing to know about business units is you currently i believe can only have up to 10 um, you start off with three or four, and after that point, it's an add-on, and you get them, I think, in bundles of three. So that would be something you would have to talk to HubSpot Sales about. Um, the so if you are if you have more than ten brands that you're looking to manage under one HubSpot portal, at this point, that's not possible. But as HubSpot continues to to move up market, continues to expand their business units offering, I foresee that you know that number growing beyond ten, um, especially if there's a demand. So if you have more than ten brands, uh, this might not be the ideal solution, but something that you could talk to HubSpot about, and something that you could continue to research. Business units live, uh, at least from a settings perspective, under this gear icon. So that's where you would find it. Then you're going to scroll down this sidebar on settings until you get to business units. As we can see, it's still in beta. Under the current view, you will be able to see the different business units that you have. So as you can see, this portal has two. And your brand that is connected to the, to the portal. So for example, Remotish has our own portal. That would be a business unit itself. And then you would also have the other business units that you would be adding on. So you click this orange button to create a new business unit and you just basically title it a name and then it would add a another drop down to this list. Under the settings, you can manage your brand kit, which is your, um, you know, your font, your colors, your logo and fab icon. You can set that here. You can also set integrations, so you can have different business units connected to different integrations, which is really cool. You can set your privacy and consent here. Uh, you can also manage your subdomains, connect you know, different domains to different business units. And you can create different email subscription types for your different business units. So those are some of the settings that are available in the back end. Uh, so when you go to actually set up your business units, that is where all that information lives. So this is under my contact record in the portal. And what I wanted to show is how this association between a contact and a business unit happens. And that is only an association that can happen for a contact. So business units only apply to contacts, it doesn't apply to companies, it doesn't apply to deals, at least of the time of this recording. Um, it's literally a property, so that's how you associate your contact with a business unit. And you can select more than one business unit. So a contact can associate with multiple business units.
And if we go back uh, the other place where this lives, oh, maybe not. Um, yeah, so it would just be view all properties and business units. So then you can select from the different business units. So that's where it lives, and that's how a contact is associated with a business unit. The other really cool thing about business units is that you can have a business unit associated with a contact property. So for example, if we go to create a property, we have the uh, object type for contact, we can then choose that business unit that we want that property to associate with. So for example, if you're collecting the same field for multiple business units, you can have one of those fields for every single business units so that you can parse your data and you can keep it separate. So at this point, we would actually choose that group, we would label it, and then we would save that as the business unit. So you can choose which business unit you want to create that for, and then you can save that. You can use that field in, uh, in workflows, you can use it in forms as well, uh, as well as data imports. So another really cool uh, feature, and one of the most beneficial features is being able to parse your data. So that's really important, and it's a critical piece to business units. Next thing I wanted to talk about is that forms also can be associated with business units. So you can see here, this would be a remotest form. One thing to know is that you cannot associate a form to a business unit after that form has been created. So if you already have a form that's being used on your website, you would actually have to recreate that form and you have to then associate that with a business unit. And when a contact comes through on that form, it would then append that business unit to the business unit contact property. So that is how you can kind of automate business units being set for your contacts. Um, you can also use those business unit properties that you've created for the business unit form that it associates with. And then you're just capturing all the information for those business units within that particular form. How, how do you go about setting the business unit? It's very straightforward. On the form, you just come in and where does it live? Actually, it might be on create form. Yeah, here it is, sorry. So you'd select from the business unit here. So you can choose one of the one of the business units that you have. At that point, you'd create the form and it would uh, it would add it to that business unit. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show is how workflows uh, interact with business units. And actually, since I first work, started working with business units, uh, this has actually been changed. So you know that they're constantly updating this. You used to not be able to write any information to the business unit property because it was a HubSpot property. Uh, that is no longer true. You can append a value to business units. So you can set your business unit with a workflow, which is incredibly powerful. Uh, it was a really big feature that was lacking a couple months ago, like a month or two ago. So it's great to see that that's been added. Uh, a couple different things that you can do with a workflow. You can use a business unit as a contact enrollment trigger. So you can use that business unit to kick off the workflow. You can also use a business unit to, um, to segment an if then branch. So if you wanted to have different journeys for each of your different business units, you can do that by segmenting with an if-then branch. You can also, as we just said, we can append or replace a, a business unit value um, with a workflow, which wasn't possible as of like a month ago. Um, so those are three really cool features that you can use with a workflow. Now, when it comes to reporting, that's gonna be another critical area where business units are, are necessary. As we can see, um, we have the business units here. So business units are a big part of, of reporting. And you can create a custom report. You can either create a single object, you can use a contact and then pull business unit into that. But what I wanted to show real quick, just for uh, sake of time, is using it in a custom report builder. So in the custom report builder, you can actually use that property and you can set it as your x-axis. <coughs> So you can break down um, 
break down performance by business unit. So whatever that y-axis may be, um, you know, number of page views, number of closed deals, whatever that, you know, the y-axis is, um, you know, you can have that and then it's broken down by business unit. So that's one really powerful way that you can use business units in reporting. You can also use it in a single object report. And then one last thing I want to show is how that shows up in attribution reporting as well. So business units, when they're activated in the portal, actually become a filter option for your attribution reporting. Really cool. So business units are going to continue to play a big part in reporting, um, and they already are. As you can see, one thing that you'll find consistently on any of these elements that are um, impacted by business units, you can actually filter by business unit as well, which is incredibly helpful. I have two more things to talk about with business units, and the next one would be creating a sidebar. So I'm just going to create a test sidebar real quick. So if we wanted to, um, you know, let's say. Had, we had created a bunch of business units for the raving business unit. We want to make that uh, section conditional. So in the event that this is true, we then want this contact uh, sidebar to show. We would then be able to select from business units. We can choose which value that would be, so raving fan pro. And if the business unit for a contact is equal to raving fan pro, this section would show up on that contact sidebar. Uh, and then you can also like search for, I haven't created any right now, but if you had business unit properties that were specific to Raving Fan Pro, for example, and you're collecting that on your Raving Fan Pro forms, you can then come in here and you can choose those properties. Uh, there is none currently. And then all of those properties that are associated would show up in the event that that contact uh, is a member of that business unit. Very last thing is how do you tie in website pages? It's very straightforward. Uh, you would just, in order to associate a website page with a business unit, you just need to uh, select the proper domain that's associated with that business unit. Um, and then you would create its own template uh, or own you know theme that you're going to be using for that. And you would publish it using that on the subdomain. So that's how you would go about publishing content on your business unit's website. Um, the same thing would apply for an email, except you would need to set up an, its own email subscription type, and then you would need an email template uh, that was designed specifically for that business unit. So that's everything I have to talk about business units. I know I packed it as, as fast as I could into what's now turned into 15 minutes. Um, I'm really interested to hear what everybody else's interactions have been with business units. Obviously, your execution of it is going to come down to your use case. So it's going to be different on a use case by use case basis. So please, I would love to hear your feedback. How has your team leveraged business units? How have you found success with business units? If you're fresh, fresh to business units and this is all new information, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that as well. I'm going to be looking to publish more content. I've been really busy in the best way possible, uh, enjoying a lot of great work with great clients and great teammates. Um, so I'm still going to try to find time at least to do hopefully one of these videos a month and uh, looking forward to continuing to create content. Let me know if you thought this was helpful. Thank you.